welcome to Title Match Wrestling Presents. And I'm with Sabu. Sabu, we're here at WrestleMania 32 weekend here in Dallas, Texas. The legendary Sabu, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I never knew what a tryout was. I never heard of a tryout. I thought they they want you or they don't. And one day, uh, J.J. Dillon called me and said, hey, Vince would like to get in, get you, want you to come in and get a look at you. This was in 94, 95, I think it was. And I go, what do you mean get a look at me? He goes, yeah, come on in for a tryout. Or a tryout? What's a tryout? He goes, to see if uh, we want to use you. And I said, well, does it pay? And he goes, yeah, it pays 300 bucks a shot. I said, well, I'll come in for the money and see if I'll try you guys out. I'll see if I like you guys. So I came in and did the money, and uh, they offered me a job, and I said uh, I couldn't take it because I was already with ECW. And Vince goes like, I can't believe that you would give up a job. I'm, 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 some, I'm offering you 200 and 250,000 a year, and you're gonna give up a job for a job that might not even be there tomorrow. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and it was, you know, got screwed in the end, but whatever. What was it that made you want to stay with ECW instead of the WWE? The Paul made these big old promises, and I, and I liked. Uh, being able to express my art form my way, WWE would have changed me, and uh, and actually what they had in mind, I don't know if you remember, was called the Sultan. The Sultan was one of the Samoans, and he had his tongue cut out supposedly, and he had a thing over his mouth. And his uncle, his manager was his uncle, the Iron Sheik. So it was kind of like my gimmick. I didn't speak, and uh, my uncle was, iron, was the Sheik, you know, and I wasn't a Sultan, but he had the baggy pants. He kind of made made him look like me, and he didn't talk, you know. That was the they, that was the idea they wanted for me because they go, we, we would modify your gimmick. And I go, well, well, I don't want to change nothing. You know, I'm happy it's the way I am. And, uh, and then Vince goes, well, no, we have, we'd have to, we don't hire talent, we create talent. And that's what I understood that, you know, they, they weren't hiring me for Sabu, they were hiring me for a body, you know. So they kept that and then basically just placed it on Rikishi. Put it on to the out. Yeah, Rikishi, exactly, you remember, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They only wanted you in under their terms so yeah. that they could kind of mold you into their right. own. Right, and then someone could say, well, I take credit for him going over or, or blame it on him because he didn't go over, you know what I mean? But since I, I was, I kind of built myself, no one could take credit for me. The only thing they could do is say, uh, he did it wrong because I didn't show him, you know, or something like that, you know. Around the time they were kind of developing the new generation of stars, yeah. how do you think the Sabu how do you think both characters would have fit in? You, you originally and the one that they proposed. I mean, do you think it would have worked out? Uh, yeah, because I would have made it work out. Uh, I was young enough to, to, to change. You know, I wasn't totally set in my way, but I, I didn't want to uh, embarrass my uncle by saying the Iron Sheik was my uncle. That's That was the deal breaker. I probably would have did it if the Iron Sheik wasn't involved. Nothing against him personally, and he even knows that. But there's no way, you know, it would break my uncle's heart to say that this guy was my uncle or, or the, the, you know, to go with that stupid gimmick, you know. Had you met Owen before? Nope. How did that turn out? It was a great match. But, um, I wrestled um, uh, Scotty to Hardy uh, in my first match, and Vince liked it. So he goes, this is my mark match. I want you to wrestle Owen Hart, but be careful, he's got a bad knee, boom, boom, boom. So I went out there and I wrestled him, and Vince said, great, you got a job. After that match, he said I had a job. And that's when he offered me an up, boom, boom, boom. Then, uh, I had another night to wrestle, and then, then, then that night I said, no, I'm, I can't take the job. Do you, not that, not that you regret it, but I mean, do you look back and say, you know what, man, this thing with Paul Heyman, I mean. Yeah, I wish I would have took it. <laughs> I wish I would have took it, yeah. Yeah. It just seems so good what Paul was promising. I mean, what, what were oh, the yeah. kind of things that he was promising you guys? Oh, was fuck, uh, pay-per-view, million dollars a year, fucking, uh, you know, everything. Uh, action figures, everything we didn't have, magazines, you know, we never had none of that shit. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know, toy figures, all this stuff, pay-per-views, you know, money. We never had money. <laughs> we still didn't have money. We had bad checks. <laughs> Did you know him in WCW? No, 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 I never met him before. He just called me one day and started putting me over one day and, and said he had a company called uh, World Wrestling Network he wanted to use me for, but in the meantime, he was booking, starting to book, going to book this company called uh, Eastern Championship Wrestling. No idea of bringing me in. One day this guy told me, Dennis Corluzzo said, call Todd Gordon, he's a sucker. You can get 500 bucks out of him. He's running ECW. So I said, hey Todd, this is Sabu. And he, bought, and he came in his pants and I said it. And then uh, he goes, how much do you want to come in? I said, 300. I, I didn't have the guts to say 500. He said, yeah, come on in. So I happened to be there the same day Paul was there. Paul didn't book me or anything. We just happened to be the same day. And then he pushed me. And like I always said, don't take no genius to push the most over guy. You know, it was easy to see I was the most over guy. He didn't make me, and it wasn't no genius to say, hey, just push him, he's most over. It doesn't take much of a genius to do that, you know. Although he is a genius, but not in that way, not, not that day. 
make you mad a little bit to see Paul Heyman on TV now with all the money that he's got coming not, in? Not, not mad. I can just see the smug look in his face because how he, he no, not me, he, he could if he could if, if I would have talked, but he had everybody motherfucker Vince on the mic every chance they got for seven years. Fuck Vince this, fuck Vince that, you know, fuck WWE this. The whole fucking time, even himself, and all along, he's always wanted to work for Vince. Now he's right where he wants to be. Other than he doesn't want to be on TV, he wants to be behind the scenes. So Vince is probably making him eat shit by making him be uh, Brock Lesnar's manager because he doesn't want to be. You know, although he's great at it, but he'd rather be behind the scenes, you know, giving ideas and shit like that. But uh, that's what he's always wanted to be. Ever since he, he my uncle told me when he was 16 years old, uh, the Grand Wizard, um, Ernie Roth, used to pick him up in his limousine. And if you rode in the limousine, it meant that like you're in. Paulie was like 16 years old with a you know with a with a camera, and he was in, so he got to know everybody ever since he was 16 years old. So he always wanted to work for Vince his whole life, you know. But he had everybody motherfuck Vince until he got to work there. Then he said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I guess." <laughs> so do you think do you think Vince is actually employing him just to just so he won't hurt him on the outside? Yeah, he's 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 got he gave him a job so he won't work for somebody else, guaranteed. And, he, and you don't think he likes working, or that's not where he wants to be, is managing Brock Lesnar? No, he doesn't. No? No. That's like, he probably doesn't mind it that much because it's Brock, but uh, he don't want to manage nobody. He don't want to go in front. He don't want to be on TV. Do you think Paul would be more of an asset to the company if they did have him on the book? Yeah, of course. Yeah, they, for, for three years he wrote Steve Austin's every word he said. You know, for when the first three years Steve Austin got over, he wrote every word he said. Every word that came out of Steve Austin's mouth, Steve, or, uh, Paul wrote for him. Paul loves doing that shit. He's a liar. <laughs> he loves like writing lies shit. <laughs> he actually said to fucking FedEx, he goes, oh my God. He's like, everybody's saying, where's our money? Where's our money? He goes, just a minute. Oh my God. You did, just a minute. Sabu, just a minute. Here, listen to him. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Sabu. Oh my God. Say it again. And I go, there's nobody there. Oh, they must hung up. They said the FedEx plane crashed with the checks in it. <laughs> I said, there's a, what about the cash? He goes, well, the cash was in there too. It all burned up. <laughs> I said, yeah, but if it was checks, there's still cash in the bank. Oh. <laughs> but anyways, that was one of those funny lies. Those were some because we heard too, like, you know, some people have said like, oh, uh, you know, they showed up at the airport and the, the ticket would be canceled. It would be canceled, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I don't know, or something. Yeah. That ever happened to you? Like, Yeah, all the time. Or, or I had to go with Gus Ramirez. Because uh, Gus Ramirez, somebody died in his family every week, so I had to go to the airport as Gus Ramirez. <laughs> well, the people knew who I was, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he was always pulling that shit. Overall memories working for ECW, I mean, are you proud of the legacy that you Yeah, 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 of course, I loved it. I, I, I didn't appreciate it as much as I should have at the time, but I really appreciate it now, and I wish it would have went on longer, because uh, I was king shit for a little while. I got to do, you know, I got to be what I wanted to be, and uh, do what I wanted to do, and uh, have fun at it, and get paid for it, or promise to get paid for it. You know, but uh, I thought I had a great time, yeah. I didn't appreciate it as much as I should have then, but I appreciate it now, yeah. Because they weren't really that good at wrestlers, we, we were just different. It, uh, we were killing each other, and we weren't very good at it. The trick to our business is to make it look like we're killing each other, but not. But back then, we were, we were killing each other. I wasn't, but they were killing each other. <laughs> I used to, I put a guy through a table, and I'd put him, give him an extra hundred dollars if he told everybody it hurt. <laughs> then they found out it didn't hurt. <laughs> I used to pay him extra money just to say that it hurt him, you know. But it didn't hurt him. I took care of him. To kind of keep the, the idea that... Yeah, so people wouldn't steal it, you know. Then eventually Taz fell to a table backwards until everybody didn't hurt. And so everybody started breaking tables. <laughs> Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy uh, when I was there, they weren't doing it. But when I wasn't there, they were doing it behind my back. And Paulie said they weren't doing it. And I said, no, I don't mind if they periodically someone breaks a table here and there. But not the same guy in every match break a table they were breaking tables in every single match. Then the, then they couldn't have a match without breaking a table, especially Public Enemy, for instance. And then he goes, no, no, they, then they, they, you know, they, they can have a match without a table. And it turns out they couldn't have a match without a table. Come out, walk into the ring like, whoops, I'm sorry, like the fucking bushwhackers with a table. It was ridiculous. But, uh, and they didn't, then, and Polly behind my back said, no, they weren't breaking tables. And, I, and I'd see it on video. I said, yeah, they were. I mean, what the hell, why are you like, oh, well, uh, the, the, the lighting was bad. Or, or we didn't emphasize it, or, or nobody watched it, or something. He always made an excuse for it. But, but I didn't mind if someone did, did the stuff that I did sporadically. Not in every match, not every guy. Oh! I just didn't like how they missed how I did it and just, just crashed. 
they didn't see how I set it up and, and teased it and uh, brung it out early, then brung it out later, and then broke it, or or or, or you know, uh, uh, you know, set up things early and then do do, do them in the, in the end, you know, set up like a like a camel something like a camel clutch in the beginning and then use it for a finish in the end. So something some sort of like that. They they missed that. All they all they would see was a big crash. So all they do is set up a table, throw a guy on it, and, and, and slam him through it. And so they kind of missed what I was I was trying to what I was what I was trying to express, you know. So they're almost bastardizing your creation. Yeah, yeah, they're making it shitty. They're just going for the crash instead of the set up the whole drama of it. Were you envious of that or, you know, a little? Uh, a little bit, because they were all saying, you know, uh, don't murder bridge, stick around ECW, you know, uh, they made you or, or it's where you came from and all that, it ain't the truth. I give my credit to, to my uncle and to uh, Onita and FMW. Uh, I, I learned, I honed my craft in uh, Japan, I brought it to ECW, and then they stole it, and then and I honed it some more, and whatever. But uh, but I wasn't that attached to ECW in the beginning. It was a one-month gig. It wasn't a, a day, everyday job. Japan was almost an everyday job, so I chose Japan more than ECW. You know, what was the question again? I'm sorry. <laughs> it was just you know, with, with so many guys that were getting picked up from. WCW. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were saying to me, "You got to be loyal to ECW because you know, uh, you know, the, they give you a break and all this stuff." And then they were the first ones to leave. When was, no one used them in the states, no one knew who the fuck they were until I, I brought them around. Even Eddie Guerrero, no one knew who the fuck he was until I brought him there. And I didn't actually bring him there. I suggested to Paul to bring him, and he loved uh, Art Mar more than he loved Eddie. But Art Mar ended up dying before Eddie did, or before they could bring Eddie in. So he brought in Eddie. You want the history? Bring in Art Bar. But anyways. Uh, nobody heard of those guys until we brought them in, and then they fucking they tell me to be loyal, and they're the first ones to fucking jump. They fucking you know the shit. <laughs> Were you going to go to WCW at any time later on? Yeah, yeah uh, cause I was having problems and uh, with with Paul, and uh, and they offered me a lot of money, and and uh, and I was gonna take it, and then uh, uh, long story short, before I could. Uh, you know, uh, tell my mother about this big contract I didn't have. She had a heart attack on the phone uh, because she couldn't control my dogs. They were going crazy because someone was at the door. So I didn't sign the contract. I went home. Uh, by the time I got home, I, I called Kevin Sullivan and said, okay, I'm going to fax you over the contract. And he said, too late, we're already being sued. And like a matter of six hours, uh, they're already being sued, and I lost that fucking contract. But, but it was only a threat of being sued. They didn't even, there was no suing, there was nothing. It was the threat of it, and it threw, threw it, you know, threw it away. It took it away from me. They didn't contact you afterwards and say, no. okay, you know, nothing no. happened? They said it was too much trouble. <laughs> were there any initial plans, like or any feuds that they had lined up or what they wanted you to do? Uh, something with um, Vampiro. I wanted to do something with Sting, but they said no Sting, no Hogan. But something with Vampiro and something with, uh, I think, Conan or somebody. So kind of, something kind of lame, but they thought it would save the company. So I said, all right, whatever you think, you know. You know I think it was Muda was in there at the time too. I think with me and Sting, me and Sting could have drew, or me and Hogan. No one would have ever thought Hogan would wrestle my style. And if he did a little bit of my stuff back then, he would have got over huge. I think he would have, you know, got over huger because he did get over huge anyways. But I think uh, he would have got over bigger, and the company probably would have went better. I think, you know, instead of dying. They lost sixty million dollars. All he had to give me was one million. What's wrong with sixty-one million? Why couldn't they lose sixty-one million? So if I could have saved their company, who knows? Uh, you know, if I could have, if they would have gave me a chance to, you know, I was hoping to save their company. I, I know I could have, you know. Had you been talking to some of the guys there too, like saying, you know, okay, we're gonna work on yeah, this? Yeah, you know? yeah. Mostly, well, see, the one that really set it up for me was Terry Funk. He, he set up uh, the meetings and everything. Everything was secret through Terry Funk because he really wanted me to to do well, and he felt I deserved it better than I was getting. And then uh, it just fell through. You know. How do you reflect on your time there in the company? Uh, I'm not real bitter about it. I thought it was my own fault for not kissing the right ass, or for kissing somebody's ass. I didn't kiss anybody's ass. And uh, that was one of my downfalls. But uh, that's also one of the things I'm proud of, is that I didn't have to kiss nobody's ass to get ahead. But I didn't also get ahead, though. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I probably should have kissed an ass, but I'm, I'm glad I didn't. I don't regret not kissing nobody's ass. It's, I just didn't, you know, didn't happen. <laughs> so there were other guys that were kissing ass who were getting spots above you. Oh, of course. When, when you when you when there's an agent and you're up his ass, and uh, of course he's going to bring your name up in the booking meeting. 
because you can say so and so something I asked so much I got to bring them up in the meeting. But if you never say nothing, that they, they don't even notice you. You know, they don't care how good you are, or whatever. It's, it's it's who you're you're friends with who's in that booking meeting. You know, and I didn't have any friends in that booking meeting. Not not nobody I kissed up to. You know, nobody I, I'd say hey come here I got an idea or or so and so did this or or I, I smelled pot on somebody. I, you know I was in a tattletale. Everybody else was. That's how they get to be. Uh, you know, stooges or, or those, these guys up their asses, they're kissing their asses to get their push, you know, or at least get used, you know. Was, what were you promised when, when, they, when they brought you in? Were you brought in for the ECW storyline when they were bringing it back? Or not? Yeah, the, the, they promised me. First I said no, and I asked for more money and they gave me more money. Then they, then I said, then they said, we want to keep Sabu, Sabu, we didn't want to change nothing. We want Sabu the way he was in ECW, the way he got over and all this shit, no talking. You know, just the way he was, you know, the, the, the anti-hero, uh, the whole thing. And then uh, that worked out for a couple months and they slowly started changing me, you know. And then they kind of pushed me to the side and they used me to get the young guys over, which I didn't mind doing, but they weren't, they weren't ready for it, you know. Who were some of the younger guys that they wanted you to work with? Uh, like Elijah Burke and, uh, you know, Monty Brown, nothing against Monty Brown. I love Monty Brown, but he wasn't ready for the big push. There was a few other guys, you know, uh, you know especially Elijah Burke, he wasn't ready for it. Mike Knox, he's a great guy, but he wasn't ready for the push. You know, a lot of the guys weren't, you know, they just weren't ready, ready for it. it. And, and it's what they did was they took our top ECW guys and they had us, they put us over for a couple of months, then they had us get smashed by these new guys and nobody bought it. That's why the shit just went, went down the drain, nobody bought it. They're not gonna believe these guys are tough one week and next week they're not tough, you know. Were you skeptical going into this? Because we talked to some other guys. No, not, not, not really, not with the speech they gave me. I had three, three, three speeches from three top guys, two top guys, one asshole. Not an asshole, but uh, a crony. But all three gave me the same speech about, about they wanted me to be me. And, and I, I go, man, I, that's what I want. I wanted that more than money, you know. But I asked for more money just to see if I could get it, and, and I got it, you know. But it meant shit, because they didn't do what they said, you know. And I didn't have it in writing where they're going to promise me this, uh, this, you know, this sort of angle with this and this and that. Didn't, you know, none of that was in writing. Now that was all hearsay. So I, pro I it, was old, it was old school style with a, not, not a handshake, but almost a handshake, you know. Oh, it was terrible. I, I never once thought it was going to be that good. I, I thought it might be in the beginning that, you know, oh great, we got another chance and maybe it'll just blend into e WWE and they'll forget about ECW. But instead, it, it just ruined EC the legacy of ECW and it ruined the guys in ECW. It just, it just you know, it ruined it. it. It ruined us and ruined it, you know. Why they fired me? Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's hard to sort of say. I thought it was coming anyways, but uh, I showed up to a, a show on purpose uh, late, and one of the top guys was talking to me like an asshole, like a bitch, saying, you better fucking do this, Terry, and you better fucking do that. I said, hey, motherfucker, you better talk to me like a man, or I ain't gonna even show up. He goes, well, what's wrong, Sabu? Then he knew there was something wrong. And I said, I ain't coming in. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you have to come in, you have to put over this guy. I said, I'm not gonna. And he goes, why not? I said, I got, my neck is sore. He goes, you worked with pain before. I said, I'm not working with pain no more. And then he goes, what do you want me to tell Vince? I said, well, tell Vince, uh, you know, I quit. And then he goes, okay, uh, we'll come back. And then he comes back and goes, okay, Vince, I said goodbye. And that, and that was, was it? it? Was yeah. there any more contact after no, that from Vince? No, no, And that was the last time you spoke to him? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It seems, it just seems weird from a fan's perspective at the time because you had had previous runs in the cover, a couple shots, you know, like with ECW, the like 90s and stuff like that. And it seemed like if anybody's going to fit into the Attitude Era or what they were going to do before, it would be Sabu. Well, the thing was, what I figured out was, you know, since I didn't kiss the right, right ass or any ass, that if you're not their creation, nobody gets to take credit for you. So, so that means nobody's going to be behind you in a booking meeting or in a push or in a special angle. Because like they go, yeah, I brought up MVP. And nothing, you know, nothing against MVP. I love him. But someone, you know, helped him. And so they go, well, I brought him up. He's my guy. I'll push him in. Then he got all the big matches because he had someone behind him pushing him. I didn't have no one. I didn't think I had to kiss somebody's ass to show that I was good enough to be on the top, in the a, on the A roster, you know what I mean? Or any roster, you know what I mean? I didn't think I had to... Uh, kiss somebody's ass or be somebody's friend to do good business, you know. I figured business is business, friendship is friendship. It didn't have to be, it didn't have to be intertwined. Sure. You know, get, I mean, I understand you gotta get along with the guys, but I don't have to hang out with them either, though. Were there any guys that you saw on the roster when you were working there that you thought, like, I can't believe these guys are even here, like? Well, yeah, a lot of guys, <laughs> a lot of guys. But a lot of guys were just collecting paychecks. They even said it, you know, they, even, they don't even know why they were there also. Like every Monday, they flew in everybody. Even guys, they weren't working, or wasn't working, they flew in maybe 80 guys. 
and uh, only using 30 or 40 of them. The rest of them are there just on hand, just in case they might need them, you know, just in case. And the room on Monday, so they have to stay there Monday, <laughs> you know. It's kind of mind-boggling to think, like from a business perspective, yeah. why you bring out so many extra. And, and also so much unexpected money, you know, that's a lot of pay, you know, they pay the airfare and all that. It's a lot of money to waste on, on guys they might use. They also brought back a few guys that you were very close with, uh, Dreamer, the Dudleys, um, and Rhino. Were you contacted to come back to work that angle at all? No, uh, uh, I'm not sure why not, but uh, uh, no, I wasn't, no. Do you have any intentions or do you want to go back at all? It's not that I don't want to go back, it's just that I don't care if I go back. If they call me to go back, of course I'll go back. But am I waiting for the call? No. And I, am I hoping for the call? No. But if it happens, it happens, you know. Yeah, actually I did, it was all right. Uh, uh, Jeff and Dixie, they let me pretty much do what I wanted, you know, the, sort of, you know, within reason. Uh, they were they were all right. Uh, I was, like I said, I didn't appreciate them at the time. <laughs> you know, I, I motherfuckered them when I shouldn't have. And uh, actually they were pretty good to me, better than I thought they were, you know. It just, they didn't show it to my face. I just found out later on they were better to me behind my back. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I could probably see me working there again. When you say you motherfuckered them, <laughs> attitude-wise, or did you, was there an incident in particular? Uh, no, attitude-wise, just uh, didn't listen to them that good, and, and uh, uh, you know, just, I don't know, just when they say something to me, I motherfuckered them, you know, like, you know, fuck you, you know, <laughs> you know not, not really meaning it, but not giving a shit what they think either. But I, I, I got an idea, and I, I don't want to spill the beans, but but uh, I hate saying like have a hardcore division that that that's gross. But uh, like have have like a hardcore division where they have one hardcore match maybe a month, and then at the end of the year have a hardcore or that type of pay per view with just that kind of wrestling. But don't have it every day, every week, every month, or every day, every week. Have it once a month, and then the best out of the best wrestle in that pay per view. You know what I mean? Where, like they had the hardcore justice, where they just had ECW guys and guys that threw in there, but they weren't the best hardcore guys. We could, you know, we could search the world and find the best hardcore guys. You know, they got money, or, or we can fake it. You know, uh, find the teach them the guys to be the best, and then say they're from Singapore or something. You know, but uh, I think I have a good idea for that, and I don't want to spill the beans too much. But I know it would work if they did it slowly and and. and um, made it special not make okay every 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 three months is a fucking uh, fight to the death match no once a year is a fight to the death match you know, leading up to that is lead, these other types of matches what ain't death matches what are different stipulations that leads to this uh, end of the world match you know which really ain't end of the world match but you know but but something where uh, at the end of this match the dust has to settle and they talk about it for six months there's not another one for another year you know what i mean i don't want to explain it to them through text or nothing like that i have to do it face to face and and uh you know i'd have to have a meeting with them or something or, you know but I, I really think if i could explain it to them in person and and show them in writing uh i think they'd buy it and i think it would work i really do have you ever watched or uh, checked out the company Lucha Underground? Yeah, not, not that much, but but yeah, a little bit. I like it. I like watching it. I, I don't really like uh, the way they film it because it's too much high depth or whatever. It looks too much like a movie or something. It don't look like raw uh, sport TV or you know TV wrestling. It more looks like a movie or a sitcom. Too crisp. I don't know how to explain it. Too it, cinematic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's too Hollywood. It's too nice, you know. So some things can be rough edges and dirty and 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 and, and see. To me, my definition, my uh, definition of extreme and hardcore. Extreme is when I use a weapon, uh, that lamp. That makes that's an extreme weapon. Hardcore is something you make anything a weapon. You don't need a weapon to be hardcore. Hardcore is a. Uh, a frame of mind. It's where a place you get to where you want to kill somebody. You, you don't, you know, hardcore is, is, a, is a, a level of anger you reach, or, you know, where you can make anything a weapon, not have to have uh, a sword or, or a baseball bat to, to, to be a weapon, because then that's extreme, which I don't believe that I'm an extreme wrestler. I'm more, I consider myself more of a hardcore wrestler, where I use a chair and a table, and I try not to use much more than that. Well, I can't put myself in there, but uh, 
you know, Van Dam, of course, Brock Lesnar, of course. Uh, that's who I'd like to wrestle before I retire is Brock, you know. Um, that one little Mexican that forgot his name, starts with a K. So that flip of shit. Yes, him. He, he's fucking awesome. And uh, Aerostar. You ever heard of Aerostar? Oh, he's awesome. Yeah, he, he, he'd be up there. And uh, uh, Blue Demon. Blue Demon's one of my favorite. Well, see, they're just best to me. They're not really best around the world, I don't think. They're just best to me. Um, I guess uh, Brock and uh, and me when I get my new hip. <laughs> I guess that'd be my best main event because I, I think uh, I think me and him could draw. I know I could. I could draw with him because people probably wouldn't think that he'd wrestle like I would wrestle my style, and I'm sure he would. I'm positive he would. And I'd wrestle, try to wrestle his style if I could, you know. Now, Sabu, you've been traveling a lot lately, and but you're not alone. There's a new member of the Sabu team. The thing is, I haven't seen her. Well, this is uh, my super genie, Melissa Coates. She's a former world champion bodybuilder. Uh, she was a Miss Olympia contender, uh, Gentana champion, and all kinds of bodybuilding and amateur championships. And now she aids me in my, my matches. She's not a typical manager or valet. She is more of a corner man or a corner person. She aids me and aids me in my match and helps me point out things I don't see for myself. I make him look much more attractive to the crowd. Yes. Yeah. She points out things, <laughs> she points out things that I, I miss and that will help me well help me in my match. I and give him strategy, I tell him when to when to hit his finisher. And, and locates uh, objects for me, chairs, tables, popcorn, whatever I need. <laughs> I was gonna say, you're, water. Not, you're yeah. not the typical, you actually get involved with chairs and stuff yeah, like that. Right. Yeah, and it's actually, you have to throw the chair in a particular way or it'll tip. Like it actually takes a lot of skill. It's funny you don't think about it until you have to do it. I'll climb to the top rope and then she'll throw me the chair to the top rope and then I'll do something from the top rope or throw something across the ring and then I'll use it across the ring. Yeah, so we actually have to time things. Like I have to know when he's going to be in a certain position and throw it to me and wrestling is so much timing. So we're lucky because we gel together. It turns out really well. And she also, uh, like during the match, uh, I'll come to the uh, come to her, her, her side of the ring and then she'll tell me like what I missed or what I should go for or, or what strategy I should change or do or whatever. Yeah, I actually trained in wrestling quite a while too. I trained at developmental so I, I didn't just appear and help him out some fitness model. I actually have a, a training in, in wrestling, which some people don't know that. I was going to say that because you you had you were in the WWE. You did a pay per view, and you know you did a lot of work there. Did you guys meet at that time? How did this unique combination come together? I, I met her uh, 14, 15 years ago, and uh, we were friends. But then uh, we met again two or three years ago and, and became uh, real friends. <laughs> we just bumped into yeah. I'm like he was doing uh, XPW in California, and I was kind of interested in wrestling at the time. I was still like heavily bodybuilding, but I went to an XPW show and, and met him there and I watched the, the show. It was a little too much for me, that particular uh, right. promotion. Um, but um, yeah, then we, we kind of kept in touch and then years later when I was at developmental, I bumped into him again backstage and I just remember him saying, with a body like that and you're all covered up, like I was doing um, this kind of Odd they gimmick. It was like a funny homeless like gimmick of all things. And stuff. And that's, with a body like that, they'd cover you up like that. I mean, how yeah, so, is that? Yeah, and then, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, actually, I was being bad. Like, as wrestling is, there's a lot of badgering and kind of like people just, you know, bullying and stuff like that. And they were spreading rumors about me and Sabu. So I saw him on Twitter and I just happened to comment to him, uh, do you know so and so is going on? And you know, he got in touch with them and sort of told them off and, you know, then we were friends after that and started working together and the Super Genie gimmick came about, say, about a, a year ago. At first I was, I was still wrestling because I am trained in wrestling, so I would do Travel Sabu and he would wrestle and then I would wrestle my, you know, women's matches and then eventually he was like, oh, I got a great idea, let's do this and, you know, so far it's, it's turning out really, really well. We've gone to Japan a couple of times, to, Japan to England. Japan really got over in Japan. They're rabid, bloodthirsty fans, and uh, the first time she threw me a chair, people popped. They didn't know where, because it just came out of nowhere. It came, didn't know it. 
know where it came from. Then when they seen it came from her, they popped a little bit louder. Then she threw me another one, then it popped even louder. Then she threw me another one, then it popped even louder. So every time she threw me a chair and they knew where it's come from, it got louder and louder. Even though her throwing me a chair and me smashing a guy with it is cheating, to the Japanese it's fighting hard. <laughs> so I actually, it's not cheating to them, you know. Yeah, I don't think they expected me to be tossing chairs. I think they just thought, and oh, like, uh, this and, is and, girl, she's not going to wrestle, and, blah, and, whatever. And then in Japan, they don't bring over valets usually or managers unless they speak Japanese. And uh, I got him, to, I got them to bring her over, yeah, and I said, just, just let me show you what what you can do, and I'm sure you'll like it. And they did, and now they bring her over whenever I come over. So, and what they're actually doing is a nice uh, feud between uh, Mr. Anita. Maybe you should explain this better than me. They're they're starting a a, a feud or they're continuing it where there's going to be a yeah. series of death matches. It's actually a pretty incredible continuation of his his uh, uncle's career. So do you, do you want to tell them about that or? Nah. No, well, it's actually pretty impressive to me. This is, no, no. You know, Sabu has been, what, 30 years now, and he's still going strong. We're booked all the time, like all the time. We're, we're so busy, and, and, you know, the fact that in Japan they're, they're reintroducing this kind of huge angle, like, you know, he's modest, he won't talk about it, but, you know, it's kind of what I'm here for. But, um, you know, it's, it's pretty incredible that after this many years someone can still have that career. And even people we bump into, like at big time wrestling shows who are WD, WWE agents, I won't say who they are specifically, but they're always, they come up to him and they're like, wow, you're still doing what you do, like, because he is still in the ring wrestling. Like, how many people can but still do that after this many guys years? motherfucking me 20 years ago. Well, they're all, like, <laughs> they're yeah. They all yeah. me 20 years ago. Now they're eating shit. <laughs> it's an interesting business. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of, not to say breathed new life, but created more opportunities for both of you guys. Well, that's what I was telling her. She might have added some more life to my career, you know, uh, and a new element to me, you know, uh, not necessarily a reinvention, but like uh, in the 60s, my uncle used to have his wife come out as a princess, as, a, as like a, a slave girl, you know. So I got her kind of like that, except for I don't beat her up in the ring like he did. He used to like beat her up and get heat, and then the baby face make the save and this and that, but... I do her like a baby face. Yeah, and so, Sabu's a baby face, so we're... And the people like it. They, they, they like it more and more as we do it, so I think uh, it'll catch on good. Have you guys had an opportunity to have any mixed tag matches yet? No, I, I'm, I don't like those. Huh? Uh, I'll do them if the price is right and if, and if there's another choice, but I don't like intergender matches. She has them a lot and she knows that she gets a lot of responses for them, but I don't like uh, guys versus girls. I, I still like it. I just don't like it. You know. I mean, the, the crowd likes it, you know, the way yeah, I look so at it, it's sports entertainment, and there's a, 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 a large me, number of people who yeah. do like that. Well, my personal feeling is I don't, but... but uh, well, I know I you, I know. Do you think it's not believable? Or? No, I don't know. I just don't like men wrestling women. It shouldn't... I guess it looks like violence or something, but, uh, I don't you know... know it's, unless um, uh, it's just me punching you in the stomach or something. <laughs> we have we have this topic a lot on our channel where we ask people about the intergender wrestling. We've had several different responses, but one that kind of plays what you were saying, like we had Perry Saturn on er, years ago, and he had said, "I don't feel that a girl should ever work with a guy competitively. There's no way that I don't care. You ain't gonna find any girl that's can kick my ass. That's it. Period." Is that that? I don't think it's believable. Uh, I just personally don't like it. I don't know why. It's believable with some like women it. against some men. I, when I worked at NWA Anarchy for a while, and I, I wrestled smaller guys. So, you know, I'm a former pro bodybuilder, so I'm honestly stronger than quite a few men. Guys, I'm just yeah. being honest. You know, uh, I am. And um, it, it is going to happen in some cases where women are stronger than men. And, and for sports entertainment, I mean, when China was wrestling, I mean, it was very popular. There's a whole bunch of guys out there who, who like that type of thing and women who like it. And I think a lot of entertainment is vicariously living through other people. You might, you know, some guys who maybe had their, their mother beaten up by their dads or something, they're going to love seeing a girl kick some guy's ass because it kind of releases some of that. And I think that's, that's what you do with entertainment. I think people try to live through it, it releases some tension, and I think that's... That's Partly true. why it's Just popular. That, you he know? asked me a question if I liked it, and I said no. That's all. But yes, there's a spot for it. There's a place for it. And there's people that, who do like it. This, I'm not one of them. Oh, dang. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> He needs more squats, again? he needs a little more Can power in those again? legs. Oh, watch this, uh, that was great. 
If he could do that twice, uh, I'd give him some money. I'll, uh, I'll offer him a break on some training sessions. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> His knees didn't even make it past the rope. Did you see that? Yeah, and you, <laughs> you didn't have anything like that on Botchamania. Do I? Nothing that bad, but I'm uh, not yeah, sure I'm I have it, so you. what? <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Look, okay, he's got rings, I see. He ain't doing shit. He's not even watching. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he's just Oh, that guy just, he put his hands he behind his yeah, neck like he's completely <laughs> bored. Damn. Wow. Yeah, at least put the guy over for crashing. So what are you guys seeing on the screen here? Well, punches in the corner and Oh, then, he just wow. pulled him over uh, the top rope to the floor. He just threw him. He missed, uh, I think he meant to power bomb him onto the uh, top rope and he missed him. I think he was mad and he just tossed him. No, no, no. <laughs> he wasn't mad. Yeah, I think he went to power bomb him on the top rope. He threw rope. him out of the ring onto the floor. He went to power bomb him on the, on the rope and he went over. Oh. Like, how uh, necessary is this spot in like any match? God. They wanted the pops. Well, they wanted the power bomb in the, in the turnbuckle. You know, uh, making, I see what like, he wanted crash. to do, but... <laughs> So how badly was this guy injured after? I don't know. He had a bad concussion, but other than that, I think he was okay. Wow. Yeah. No broken neck. That's no impressive. broken neck. All timers. Same thing with the wrestler, man. It's just like they wanted to see somebody die, you know? And it's just the ECW, man. It's the closest thing to get almost getting killed. Because it was sick. Yeah. It was sick, man. Any guys like Sabu and... Guys that didn't care about other people's bodies, you know. I mean, I'm not saying that Sabu, Sabu was, was, I had a lot of fun with Sabu, and I like him a lot. He's a good dude, man. It's just that, you know, that they have no respect for anybody else's body, man. You know, I mean, he, he, one match with Sabu, he threw a chair. and just, whack, hit me right in the face, gave me a scar right here. You know, and that was it. Wasn't well, he match. supposed to know that you were? Uh, freaking chair up. No, no, work with I walked actually, right over to him, and it was like, he yeah. yeah, had to give it to me, because you know what? Now you're getting your receipt, because yeah. I didn't want that. I didn't deserve that. Well, he got a receipt. He got the whole fucking cash register. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> right right the open, man. And that was the end of the chair shots. I threw a chair, and it went sideways, and it hit him like an uh, Instead of hitting him like this, he went sideways and got him like a blade, like a, a axe. Okay, so he was being cool and wasn't protecting himself. Yeah, it wasn't his fault. I threw it, it went sideways, it hurt him, and he hurt me back. No, hurt no me I'm back. saying that in, in general. Well, if he wasn't expecting him. He was expecting He it. knows your style. He, he seen me throw the chair, he went like this, but the chair turned sideways. So it went through his block and hit him like this. Look at me. Okay, well, that's not your hit him like I know it's not my fault, but still, it's a, it, I got a receipt from it. It's after right. nature. <laughs> I told him, I told him, uh, give me a receipt, and he, he did. He okay. Knocked, he knocked the fuck out of me. How do you respond to uh, just the comments about not having respect for other people's bodies? I mean, do... uh, I think he meant, I don't have respect for my own body. I, he, he, I don't think he really meant that I don't have respect for other people's bodies, because I do. Uh, yeah, any um, match I've seen, he's... Yeah. Uh, I've always tried to take care of my with him. Yeah, I've never. I've always tried to take care of my seen opponent. him. Uh, I always try to take care of myself. So I think is what he meant was I don't have respect for myself or my own body. If anything, people to me are less respectful to Sabu. That's what I notice, and I think I've been in the business long enough to know because when I was wrestling, you know, when I was wrestling, wrestling, I'm a big built-up girl. You know, I was a lot bigger before as a pro bodybuilder. I'm telling you, girls, girls didn't have respect for me. They would screw with me all the time. Like I literally would have had to been shoot fighting almost half my opponents so um, yeah it, it was bad you know sometimes I couldn't even do the job I was supposed to do at promotions I because the, the girl, other girls wouldn't do what the bookers wanted I would have had to beat the shit out of people look, for they real her, they took spots up on purpose to make her look bad to yeah them, you know? yeah and you know it was sad that because I've always been helpful and made sure you know I was usually heel I always got everybody's stuff in to make them look good and you know it was very rarely the other way around I love this combination with you guys. I didn't know how it was going to work at first because it was very different and new, and I hate anything new. Uh -huh. But, but it, it, it's really gelling and interesting. Where can promoters, bookers, 
where can they find you guys? How can they book you uh, on their Facebook shows? Facebook and Twitter and shit like that, you know, and yeah. their real names. His Twitter is at Sabu with a four U's and a three. And mine, I have two. Mine's Melissa L. Coates or at Super Genie 111. Um, but yeah, he's on Facebook. You can find find him there. My website, you know, I, I know a lot of people because I've been in the business a long time, so they contact me uh, a lot of times to book Sabu and to book us together. And, yeah, we, you know, of course, people to, all contact him too. We've been to England together, we've been to Japan together, we've been all over the States. Where else have we been? Well, I also take him to my fitness, con like to some of my oh, fitness yeah, the, the, events. Oh, the Arnold uh, bodybuilding show last week. Yeah, Sa Sabu's still in incredible shape um, for, his, for his age now. But uh, he's probably more muscular and ripped than he, I don't know, he looks really good, but maybe he's right. keeping up appearances for me. Right. But um, yeah, so I, I um, there's such a crossover now between fitness and wrestling. Of course, like the WWE's all involved in the Arnold Classic, and I actually competed in the women's pro bodybuilding section of that called the Miss International years ago. And um, so I just recently started getting back into fitness and I think it's a, a you know, a good future for me and Sabu to, to do together. Um, I'm stronger in that, of course, he's stronger in wrestling, of course, than I am, but I think together it's kind of a good combination that, you know, it'll produce a good future, stable future, and it, it's, it's stuff that we both like to do. So. The past three years, I've gone to the International Sports Hall of Fame, and one of the, the co-founders is, is um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and another is a, a friend of mine who, who founded the Anti-Aging Congress of... Dr. Of, Bob. Yeah, Dr. Yeah, of the United States, and I'm very he interested the, in that. The International Sports Hall of Fame, as what she covered uh, this weekend. Yeah, uh, Triple H was inducted two years ago. Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle. was just inducted. Um, Mark Henry was one of the first inductees. Don, and, Don uh, Dragon Wilson. Yeah, Jason Stratham has been Dolph Lundgren. It's it's a combination of, of uh, Linda Murray, who I competed against. She was Miss Olympia, uh, I think eight times. I competed. It's a, the, the Olympia is like the WrestleMania of pro bodybuilding, and I competed in that twice. I was I was top ten within that. I was mostly noted for. I was a good competitor, but I also was in a lot of magazines because I was considered marketable, yeah, like, like still cute, the, I guess, or the not so big. In the International Hall of Fame is. From all sports, you don't necessarily have to be a superstar in one sport. It's yeah, Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench was there. R Ronda Rousey's mother, actually, who I think was the first women's judo yeah. champion or some sort of thing like that. You know, so as actors and and you know people that uh, also contribute back to society, like yeah, in mentoring kids, yeah, like they make a you're great athletes not just in one sport or just one you know public figure is what they would figure so um, you know that's I'm really honored that I get it. it's invite invitees only so I'm really honored that I get invited to that so you know I've Drake Sabu to that the past you two years Gracie. made him wear a suit we, we, made, we met Gracie uh, Royce Gracie uh, yeah Royce yeah, 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 yeah he was just there. inducted as well and his yeah. son is actually training right into there. the business now um, I'll, I'll beat him up real quick <laughs> thank you